Welcome to the Fantasy Champions Fantasy Football Podcast. Here's your host, Morgan Colby and Rick Lemon. What's going on, Fantasy Champs? Welcome to the Fantasy Champions Fantasy Football Podcast. My name is Morgan Colby. I got Rick Lemon with me as always. What's poppin' Ricardo? What's up? We got another interesting, intriguing episode of the show for you today. Uh, as we said on Tuesday's show, if you listened, we are going to be breaking down some early ADP uh, and talking about... Uh, this ADP is on Sleeper, by the way. And talking about... Um, what is surprising to us, what is not surprising to us, um, and guys that already jump off the page as, as good targets. We'll try to do uh, or break down as much as we can, I guess. Um, but anyway, so that's what we got on the docket today. I like breaking down some ADP. You get a good yeah, some early May good. ADP that will probably uh, completely definitely be different change. in August. But we're going to do 1,700 mock drafts anyway. <laughs> So anyway, before we do that, check our website, fantasygyms.com. Follow us on Twitter, Instagram, Facebook, TikTok. Just type our name in. You'll find us. If you're watching on YouTube, subscribe. Click the bell for notifications. Like, comment down below. If you're listening on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, Stitcher, or any other podcast platforms, please leave a review and share this podcast with your friendonies. All right, ready to jump into this? That was the fastest yes. intro I've ever done. <laughs> So, yeah, we're going to break down early ADP. We're going to use the sleeper ADP based on a PPR 12-team league. Um, and I also got uh, some underdog stuff too that we okay, can add. Yeah, he can he can roast compare the maybe. Algorithm. Yep, that is a good. No, idea. no, not roast. That is, but... that is good. He won't roast him. All right, so let's go through uh, top twelve first and discuss okay. the essentially what the first round is because I'm already seeing some second round <laughs> stuff that's making me slightly. Yeah, yeah, me too. Uh, <laughs> enraged almost. Now, first that's... thing that I will note. That stands out to me. Last year, in the ADP, mm-hmm. there was maybe twelve running backs off the board first. <laughs> Something stupid like yeah, there was there 10. was literally like a single receiver. It was like one receiver ADPing. Um, this year, it looks like we have five, six, seven running backs in the top ten, and then five wide receivers in PPR. Um, and it's, it's funny because even in PPR leagues, we saw a massive, uh, discrepancy between the, where the wide receivers were taken, where the running backs were taken and the running backs going in the first round. Um, that's the Mm. first thing that stands out to me in the first round is how many receivers are getting taken. That's shocking. Yeah. I don't think that's going to stay. Um, (laughs) probably because I mean, running backs always get moved up as the year goes on, especially the rookie ones or second year, like the guys that can easily get hyped up um, the young players. But uh, yeah, as of right now though, it's crazy. I I would not take a couple of these guys in the first round. Um, I think Devonte Adams at six right now. Yeah, is that's a, very, as the first receiver off the board is a little heady. It's a little high for me. Um, and I don't mind Adams. I think I like him a little more than you do, but that's a little high. Uh, Tyree Kill at nine, to me, is a little bit of a head scratcher too. Like that's where he was going with my Holmes. Oh, the he's underdog gonna... ADP has. I don't know where that he's going off the board, but Adams is ten. In the yeah, ad- underdog ADP. That's... Tyree Kill is twenty, <laughs> which I think is a lot better. Yeah. Um, I I think Tyree Kill is a top ten pick to me would be a dumb pick. Uh, unless you're a Dolphins fan. <laughs> um, yeah. I think Jefferson, though, should be the first receiver off the board. Right. Uh, so that's fine. Cooper Cup, after the year he had, you know he's going to be a first-round pick. Yep. Fine. Um, this is PPR, right? Uh, yes, sir. We got Derrick Henry at four. What do you think of that? Um, <laughs> I would do it. If I was in Alvin PPR Cook league. at three. Um. Yeah, the Cook one is, you know, despite the season not being the way that we wanted it to last year, I'm mm-hmm. not surprised that he's there, and I still wouldn't be, like, angry to take him at 3, sure. 4, or 5. So I, I don't – that one doesn't 
The Derrick Henry one is a little bit more like, all right, in a PPR league, I know we want to get our running backs, but like... If- Henry last year, though, in points per game was number RB2 still, though, I believe. In PPR? Yes, even in PPR. So, I mean, I would honestly take, and I don't, I'm not really, like, I like Eckler this year, but he's getting older too. And yeah, he is. I don't know what the situation looks like. Didn't they draft Isaiah Speller? They did. Not that he's Eckler has anything, a lot but... less tear, though, I think, on his legs than Henry. Yeah. And I would take, also I would take like, Eckler over Henry. All I day. would too. And Eckler, you know, even though they drafted Spiller, um, I feel like Spiller is more of an indictment on like Justin Jackson and the other running backs that they had. Because Eckler, even as like, what did he finish last year? RB2? He still wasn't the goal line back for the most part. Like they were using other guys. Um, Eckler was definitely involved. He had 20 touchdowns last year, though. That's a conversation yeah, that's for another a, day. Um, <laughs> that's a little ridiculous. But yeah, I would still, I'd probably put Eckler ahead of Henry and Dalvin Cook. Yeah. And to be honest, I would consider Najee Harris as well. Yeah, no, I, w- I would consider Najee Harris as in the same conversation. But um, and as far as wide receivers sense. go, I'm I'm actually kind of shocked. Right now we have Cooper Cup on the Sleeper ADP if you're listening on the podcast uh, or on YouTube because you can't see our screens. But uh, Cooper Cup is 8.7 and Justin Jefferson is 6.7. And um, I'm proud of the fantasy community for five seconds. We're not just a fantasy community, but fantasy in general. Uh, people playing fantasy football for taking Justin Jefferson over Cooper Cup. Yeah, you know what the underdog ADP though is for Cooper Cup? What? Two. Yeah, so there's that. Second overall pick. That is, there is that, which is not great. Um, I love Cooper Cup. I would not be upset with drafting Cooper Cup late first, early second, if you wanted to. Yeah, um, absolutely. But I I have like you're you're. I have problems in fantasy football with buying, like previous year's success like it's okay to look in the Mm. past and be like okay hey this guy did well right but Mm -hmm. i i just i don't like looking at cooper cup and saying when you have that crazy amount of success and the amount of like he's already reached his peak and the target yeah he's already reached his peak so it's like why draft him at the peak exactly yeah and so i think sometimes um because some people will hear that and be like, what? That's so dumb. Like you want to draft good players. Yeah. But the thing is like a guy like Cooper cup who came out of nowhere mm-hmm. and finished as the wide receiver one and not just finished as the wide receiver one, but finished as a historic wide receiver one. Um, and, and overall, I think other than John Taylor, right. He was the second highest scorer yeah. in fantasy for non quarterbacks. So people are going to look at that and draft him underdog mm-hmm. to overall. That's where it comes into effect of like you don't you're you're drafting him off previous success. You're not looking forward at all. Yeah, and and Cooper Cup is still look going forward, mm-hmm. still a Matt Stafford, still a top offense. Like he's he's still going to be great. Yeah, probably a top three, top four fantasy wide receiver, but like he's not going to have the year he had last year. And I'd be al- shocked. You also you also add. Allen Robinson into that conversation, right? Yeah, absolutely. And he, I would say, is is better than Robert Woods. Yeah. Um, I, yeah, I would agree with that. So, and I, I mean, they can target those guys a ton. Um, and I think he's going to get a large target share. But just what he did last year was so out of the ordinary that it's just not something. It that was just so good. ridiculously good. Yeah, it was, it's not repeatable. And drafting him and as to the draft him player off to the overall. Board, yeah, that's not, <laughs> that's not a good thing. Yeah. Um, the sleeper ADP, if it holds at that, I think third, second, third wide receiver, maybe fourth wide receiver off the board is okay to me. Um, I would take that mm-hmm. just because you know he's going to get target share and he's going to be a safe pick. I just I don't know that the expectation is going to be, oh, hey, well, Cooper Cup, going to be the number one guy again. Do you think uh, Cooper Cup's a top five pick in our home league? Oh, 100%. Yeah, <laughs> not even a question. Depends on who's in the top 10. Maybe we got some smart guys like you and me, but <laughs> true. Or top five, I should say. But anyway, yeah, um, I do agree with Rick. Devontae Adams, Tyreek Hill, uh, no way. Um, but let's, uh, yeah. 
let's move on to uh, Diggs. Is a is if if that many wide receivers are going off the board, I think Diggs is a steal at twelve. I like that a lot. Yeah, Diggs is that's, that's solid. Off the solid. Board, if that holds, especially in half PPR leagues, like if more there are guys in the second going. round though. I would take over Diggs. Okay. Um, well, let's jump to the second round then. Without the okay. first thing, uh, Travis Kelsey thirteen. Please no. <laughs> you people are. Not it's because scary. of the Tyree Kill thing now too, though. I think it escalated that. So should we adjust? Should, should we, uh, as our you your you and I's opinions on Travis Kelsey this year? Uh-huh. Uh, we were already. I was more specifically more like, "What the hell are you people doing?" With yes. Travis Kelsey that high last year. This year it's even worse. And um, yeah, what like should we change our minds on Travis Kelsey and be like, all right, maybe he is going to get a million targets, or should we be more concerned that because of the elevated target share and the fact Who's, that Travis no. Kelsey is like thirty three years old, that mm-hmm. that's going to wear? That's going to be a lot of wear. Absolutely, and tear it's it is going to be and a lot Hill of wear. And tear also, on. by the way, took so much pressure off tra- Travis Kelsey. Yes. This yeah, offense is going to oh, yeah. be very different, and I don't think yep. a lot of people are ready for it. Look, Kelsey's still going to be good because he's going to still be a top target. Yeah, But, yeah, you're right. Hill made a huge difference for Kelsey. Even last year, Kelsey was still tight end, too. So, let, like, let's not act like Kelsey was right, right, right. should have been a first-round pick and was this elite tight end. I mean, he was elite, but the tight end won and was worth that pick last year. He wasn't. He's mm-hmm. pretty much in the same spot this year. So he's still not going to be worth the pick. Mm-hmm. He's going to be 33. The wear and tear is true. At this point in your career, it's r- extremely rare to see tight ends finish that high. Yeah. Um, I think we'll get a top two, top three finish again from Kelsey this year. And then next year you're looking at yeah. five or six, and then we might see a complete drop off. So, but the 13th overall selection. No, I'm not taking him in the first two rounds. That's too much. Like you did, third, did third you round, not? I will did you people that, not learn your lesson last year? No, nope, they never do. Underdog has them a pick higher, twelfth overall. I, I'm round. not. I'm not like there are some leagues right where maybe guys luck out and they draft Travis Kelsey second round early, maybe maybe first round like last year, and they just mm-hmm. luck the crap out and they somehow land two good running backs in the second and third round and some good wide receivers late it's breakout guys and they just have the perfect draft and draft Kelsey and win. So it's not uh-huh. impossible. But do you know how many leagues that I play in? Every year I check. Every single year I check to see if the top tight end that was taken in the draft, if that team is even in the playoffs. And I would say about 90% of the time they're not. And it's because you stupid butt decision makers. <laughs> you drafted Kelsey too high. Stop it. It's not worth it. Yeah. It's just not worth it. Agreed. And I know you want we can the, talk all day about I know you want Kelsey, the positional though. advantage that you think you're getting well, Travis Kelsey, but are correct. you really getting that much of a positional advantage? Because tight end really doesn't matter. So. And if you don't get one of the top two or three guys, right? Then you mm-hmm. suck like the rest of the league at tight end. And you could make the argument this year has a little bit, I think could have a little bit more depth. Yeah. So uh, it's just a poor decision. It's a very poor yeah. decision. Agreed. So anyway, um, uh, oh, done on Kelsey. Here's the guys I was going to rant about. we well, not really rant because I think it's, you know, it's not, it could be a hot take on my end. Mm-hmm. But I would, and Swift is even lower on underdog. He's 14. Mm-hmm. He's 17 on underdog, 14 on sleeper. I would take him at the end of the first round, personally. I'm very high in DeAndre Swift in his PPR upside. Um, I like that at 14 a lot. Mm -hmm. Jamar Chase at 16 is ridiculous. Oh, my God. If he's on the board Um, at 16, my drawers are, like, on the other side of that. Yeah, me too. Uh, He will not get to 16 in our home league. Uh, And in most leagues, underdog has him at the fifth overall pick, so Mm -hmm. as the wide receiver three off the board. Um, Cooper Cup's two overall. Justin Jefferson's four overall. Jamar Chase's fifth overall. And Debo, uh, Debo two eighteen. Um, he's going off the board as the eighteenth pick, which I think is kind of surprising. That's not bad. Um, <laughs> it's it really isn't. I don't. If he plays for San Francisco and has kind of the same role, I think it's okay. Mm-hmm. Uh, it's okay. Yeah, I, I don't mind it. I would take him if it was like if I was like okay. 
you know, all the right, all of the wide receivers I want are off the board, and I don't got a running back I want right. to take Debo. Right. Like I would take, I would take Debo over Saquon. Yeah, I would too. Yeah, and um, Zeke and like some of these other guys. Like I would definitely take that. So like, I don't mind Debo. My only concerns are like things could just blow up real fast for Debo Samuel. Yeah. So that's true. Uh, especially if the maybe he had to sit down with the 49ers and was like, I don't want to rush the ball as much. I just want to be a receiver. All right. That is not great things for Debo Samuel fantasy wise. So it's a it I think it, out of all these guys in the second round, with the exception of AJ Brown uh and Saquon Barkley, maybe that's the riskiest and Travis Kelsey, obviously, but that's might be the riskiest pick in this round, Debo Samuel. Yeah. Um, towards the end of the round, I love CD Lamb there. Uh, mm-hmm. At the end of the second round, my guy, it's a good, good pick for a potential huge breakout wide receiver. Um, he's much higher in underdog, mm. pick fourteen. Um, yeah, and then you get your first quarterback, Josh Allen, there at twenty-one. Uh, Do you like AJ Brown at twenty? I don't know, man. I don't know. I mean, it's it, at twenty. Yeah, at twenty, that's fine. Um, I'm curious to see what Eagles. I think I would there. take CD Lamb over him though. Uh, and so the underdog ADP is twenty three. I would yeah. take CD Lamb over him as well. Yeah, and I would take Debo over him. I would take Chase over him. I take all the guys that we talked about. Yep. He's in that tier, but he's at the bottom of that tier. Yep. So. I the one guy I was gonna say that I do really like here, and hopefully um, this kind of holds. But Kamara at seventeen, mm. that's an interesting that's selection. Good value. That is good value. Is it because of a potential? Um, he has a legal hearing. It could be. I believe. Let me look. August first. So, like, is he potentially facing a small suspension, like a? Two or three game suspension. He might. That might be why he's here. But I'd take that. Yeah, especially because you could. Uh, the Saints' offense looks much better than it did last year. Mm-hmm. Jameis Winston's healthy, and then you add Chris Olave and uh, Jarvis Landry. Yep. And you get Mike Thomas back. Mike Thomas back. Yeah. This mm-hmm. the Saints' offense definitely looks like. Uh, it's improved a little bit. So, any thoughts on any more thoughts on the second round? No, I think Josh oh, Allen, the it? first quarterback off the board. Uh, yeah, that's. If I was a quarterback drafter, I'd do it too. <laughs> that's fair. So, uh, and then Zeke twenty three. You taking Zeke at twenty three? Uh, no, <laughs> yeah, I'm not. I love you, Zeke, but it's over. <laughs> he actually is not bad. Like, if he was like a third round pick. No, yeah. It would be like yeah. a, that would be good value to me. But like, there's it's a guys good secondary like, running back, but I don't know. There's just a couple running backs I'd rather have that are behind him. Yeah, I agree. Um for uh we also see Javante Williams at pick twenty four, so he's last pick of that second round. Mm-hmm. Um I could see him falling into the third round with the Melvin Gordon stuff. Um, but we'll see as the season goes along. But in the third round, uh the two running backs Rick is talking about, with Williams and Gibson, I would definitely take those two guys over Zeke. Yeah, I would too. Um, Holmes goes pick 27, which I think is a good value for quarterback drafters, third round pick. Um, Hopkins was suspended. I don't know that I would draft DeAndre Hopkins. Yeah, Hopkins in underdog is, um, I believe, pick 70 something. Yeah, so I, I don't know that this is adjusted yet. Uh, if he's pick 70 in August to 70 to 80, sheesh, oh, I'll I might take, take that. that. <laughs> yeah, I would take it. I saw someone say on Twitter where somebody tweeted that and he said, like, you know, if he's like in the seventies, I'll take that all day. And then somebody quote tweeted and said, This is what people said about Michael Thomas last year. Michael Thomas was hurt. <laughs> I was gonna say that is the dumbest so thing. What, what did, what One did, guy was injured what did and the Hopkins other guy's a do suspension. go sit in his house and fall down the stairs or something? Like, I don't understand. Yeah, it's completely different. That's I hope people have that mindset because I will yeah. gladly take Hopkins. Well, and the other thing too is that you're not Hopkins is not dealing with an injury, and it, honestly, honestly, right. it would help him to miss six weeks. <laughs> I know <laughs> it might it help would. him out a little bit. Yeah, I don't know about that take. Yeah, um, but Hopkins obviously won't be a third round pick. 
I don't yeah, care. if he ends up pick seventy, I'll be I'll be on board with that. Yeah. Um, Cam Akers pick thirty one is interesting. Yeah. Um, um, Monty, another good, solid late third solid, round pick. Solid. I, what do you think of Cam Akers? I'm still kind of. I don't know. La- <laughs> I, I, they brought him back too soon last year. Yeah. They did. So I and and I mean it didn't hurt him. Like we know he's some back. guys in the fourth round too that like I'm looking at that I think I'd rather have over Acres. But I still, Potential. I personally still feel like Acres has that. Yes, that's why I'm based conflicted. on based on the way that like even when he was out and they were just feeding the ball to Sony, mm-hmm. um, who by the way sign was Miami, right? Miami, yeah. Yes. So, um. They were feeding, 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 feeding the ball to Sony Michelle when both Henderson and Akers was out. And I think Akers is supposed to get that treatment. And I think he's going to get a massive amount of target share. Not massive amount of target share, but he's going to get good good target share and a massive workload on the ground. He's going to get the Todd Gurley work. So if he does that, I'll take him all day. He has upside to top five. But I think I think I'm back on the Akers train. I think you just convinced me. Okay, that's all I gotta say is the opportunity <laughs> is there. But uh, yeah, no, I, I and I like that. It and that's he, he played round. poorly, but like last year, and he didn't get a ton of work, and people are really using that against them. Mm-hmm. But he was coming off a torn Achilles in like five months. Yeah, like think about that. And he wasn't. I think he was working only half the time, so he couldn't even get into a rhythm either. Right. So anyway, and with Sony Michelle gone, it's showing the confidence they have in Acres and Henderson. Because I'll tell you right now, if I walked out of a draft with, uh, let's see, what's what we got here? Uh, if I walked out of a draft with like Eckler or Cook, mm-hmm. Jamar Chase, <laughs> and Cam Akers, the May ADP man makes me sweat a little every year. That's why, that's why I want to do some uh, some underdog right now because now is probably the best time to do it. Yeah, honestly. Some best ball. Uh, Monty's always a good a good uh, uh, RB two to throw in your second running yeah. back slot. He's always consistently in that. Conversation. Only concern about Montgomery is the offense. Yeah, if the offense blows, that's a concern. Hopefully, yeah. Fields can do. But he'll be the workhorse. Nothing. Yeah, he'll definitely be the workhorse. Is Cohen coming back? Is he? Is he a free agent? I think he is. I don't. I think he's a free agent. One hundred percent sure. He might be. Well, either way. Um, I'm trying to check my time here. What we got? Uh, we have another tight end, Waller, second tight end off the board, which I think is a not a great selection. Uh, Especially yeah, that's the situations. For I don't players. love that pick. But the question is, like, do they utilize him? Like the you know Josh used Josh McDaniels used utilized um under Henry last year. Yeah. I mean, I could see that. Dude, but. honestly, I think the worst thing to happen to the Raiders' fantasy output is Josh McDaniels. <laughs> and I'm, that might be a hot take, but like, I, I totally feel like Renfro is going to get all of this target share. Adams <laughs> is going to be out there, and he's going to drop like sixty targets, and uh, not like physically drop. I mean, like he's going to drop from one hundred and sixty like one hundred and ten targets, and uh, and then Waller Waller is just going to get targeted like Gronk over here. Yeah, uh, that's a possibility. Uh, I, all, that I just possibility. feel like he went there, and all of the fantasy assets that are now there all just took a step back for, for either fantasy. that or McDaniel thinks it's the 2007 Patriots, and Devontae Adams is Randy Moss, and uh, Hunter Renfro's Wes Welker, and Derek Carr's Tom Brady. <laughs> I would. So there's that. I would not like doubt that. Devontae Adams could be like that season ran. Wow, well, he was ridiculous that season. Who am I kidding? But uh, I don't think he can like, do that. But uh, but not a dark you're car. missing you're missing the greatest of all time, kind of in the middle there. So yeah, that's an issue. But, right. Anyway, um, anybody else you like in this f- third round, or um, any thoughts you have on it? Receivers are kind of interesting because I feel like Matthew, the best time it? to take receiver this year might actually be in the first two rounds. Because I don't love these third round receivers, do you? I don't. Um, like usually we Keenan's have some really okay. good options. He's okay, in the wide third receiver round. two. Mike Evans. 
saw somebody on Twitter say he's going to be a wide receiver one this year. And I'm like, why do we keep doing that? Why do we keep putting him at, at in the same conversation as Justin Jefferson? Like, this is not even I close. I don't understand. Um, Hopkins is a good one, but and Keenan Allen always is right there. The question is, for me is, is but... you, you like McLaurin, and maybe that's a good thing for McLaurin that maybe he finally has a decent quarterback, not not a good quarterback, but an okay one. Yeah, that's even pushing and Deontay it. Deontay Johnson, <laughs> some questions there too. There are. There's just a lot of questions with these receivers. Um. Yeah. Uh, uh, the third rounds lately have been garbage, to be honest with you. I would definitely take probably Keenan Allen. Yeah, but I mean, the third round is kind of garbage, but there are some decent, like, I would definitely target probably Cam Akers in this round. Um, mm-hmm. I think, ugh, I don't know, Keenan Allen's a solid pick, yeah. still with Herbert. He's getting old, but um, still always has Ooh. decent finishes. Yeah, and then it, it's kind of a little gross. If you, if you can get Gibson, maybe he falls to you, but yeah, I don't know. If that's third round's kind of gross. Um, guys that I'm excited about here: Kyle Pitts, 39. Oh, now we're in the fourth round, though, right? This is fourth yeah, round. Yeah, dude, this is fourth round. So we fourth close round, up yeah. the show soon. So I'm just throwing. Yeah, true. I like. Uh, yeah, I would take st- scary Terry. You know how I'd be, but Kyle Pitts. Yeah, this is the same spot he was last year. Yeah, actually, ex- ex- except he's actually should be valued in this spot. Yeah, because maybe he'll get more than one touchdown. Uh, I know you'll rip your pants off for Dobbins. I will. Fourth round, though. Come on. Not even a question. Mike Thomas pick forty seven is interesting. That is interesting. Oh, Lamar Jackson pick forty nine. We're looking at fifth round now, though, right? That's fifth round. Yeah, I'm just cruising through the board talking about guys. Okay. Like James Conner, 53, is not going to stay there. Underdog has him at 30. Same yeah, with Fournette. Where the heck is Four- Fournette's 44? Is that uh, underdog has Lennon Fournette at pick 24. Where did you say underdog had James Conner? Pick 30. Yeah, if he stays at pick 52, um, I don't love that pick, but my God, if that's your flex, I'll take it. Yeah. Stealing candy from the baby. I don't know if I'm going to keep taking Hawkster at pick 53. Yeah, I don't like that. I would rather just take there's some late round tight ends like Dawson Knox. Yeah. Um, we always have our late breakout. This last year I said Cole Komet. I think I was a year early because I'm popping back on the Cole Komet train. Oh, he's, um, like that offense has opened up. He's like tight end 14 right now, so I'll take that. Yeah. Uh, let's see, Allen Robinson. Where is he? Interesting one. Pick 57. I went right by him. Yeah, I don't know. I don't know if I like that. I don't know if I like Do that. Do they treat him Clyde. like Odell? I don't know. I mean, if they do, that's actually kind of a good pick. Um, Clyde at 55 on the Mighty Have Fallen. What do you think of that? Mine doesn't say Clyde. Oh, 54. Um, I don't know. I might take it. Maybe we'll who, see how. Yeah, I mean, there? if it's him or Damian Harris, I would take Clyde. Who's, so, who else is there? Or Cream Hunt. Um, Brees Hall, sixty-nine. So this is the part where I think that there's a big difference as well mm-hmm. with underdog and uh, sleeper. Do you think he would go higher in sleeper later? Yes. In best ball, yes. best ball. There's sometimes you know ADP on best ball is good because it's like people are seeing the the variables you know what yeah I, mean? I think it, best ball is I mean it's not perfect because I think they take some well, they, receivers they spend, a little high spend, oh I spit all over the place you you spend money my microphone is moist um, it's more of people that I think the ADP though it's more accurate because people gamble yes and, and yes. So that's good but the problem with uh ADP from underdog is that it's all best ball so um you're not drafting to, you know, a specific strategy on the season. You're drafting to hit on enough guys. So, like, you know, if you have two running backs at the top of your list and you're taking Brees Hall, you're hoping that it's a shot in the dark that he ends up being, you know, a top 10 running back. And, right. you know, he'll he'll be able to spell the performance. But everyone's fantasy points count on the whole week. So it's a completely different mentality and mindset than you would have in redraft. Um, hmm. So I don't know if it'll completely change in redraft for Brees Hall, but we'll see. 
Yeah, but I mean, every year we get the hyped up rookie running back, right? Clyde, yep. Najee Harris, yep. John John Taylor. Like we get the hyped up guys that they as as we get closer to the start of the regular season, will be like rookie rookies. running backs go up a full round or two. So yeah. if Brees Hall, heck, even where he is an underdog, isn't that bad. Um, because I figured he was going to be like a, a third round pick, but an underdog right now, he's a late fourth, early fifth. Yeah. Um, that's not bad at all. Ken Walker is um, like a. That's not bad either for his value. Well, uh, yeah, I guess he because he's not going to start, but I feel like that might be a little too high considering. Where where is he on sleeper? Seventy three. On underdog, he's ninety. Yeah, at ninety smash and grab. Seventy three yep. on sleeper, no thanks. Yeah, like I, I mean, I, it might be an okay pick, but like I'm not excited. Look at the running backs around him though, or after him, I should Mitchell's say, like Michael Carter, AJ Dillon. Yeah, yeah. At that point, it's dead in the water. Devin Singletary. But then so. you have this is what I'm talking about. These like Traylon Burks, that's a good pick. Amon Ra, Brandon Ayuk, Devonta Smith. Like Dude, all, all I know Elijah Moore, Mike Williams. Well, Mike Williams, yeah. I'm not really drafting, but like all those guys are reasonable picks. Smash Hollywood Brown at 86 is a steal. Yeah, that that's gonna change, especially with D Hop. That has to change. Suspended. Um, another one that's Spiller gonna change. Going at 88. Yeah, I don't People know. People are stupid. Um, one that's gonna change is, and I know we're both a little lower on him than we were, but mm-hmm. Jalen Waddle is picked 70. <laughs> that kind of that. insane. I saw that. I was hoping you wouldn't see it. Well, on underdog, he is pick thirty-three. So I like Waddle a lot. Uh, the main issue, I wouldn't take him at thirty-three. It's no, I wouldn't Tyree, either. It's Tyreek Hill. I wouldn't take Waddle at thirty-three. Yeah, and that is the main issue. But at pick seventy, yeah, oh yeah, smash. <laughs> like I like smash. Mitchell too. Uh, yeah, Mitchell for sure. Oh my god, I, Michael I just, Pittman. You, you said uh, Marquise Hollywood Brown at the spot, and I'm always like, dude, what in the crap? Yeah, that's nutty. Um, um yes. Mooney at 93 is. <sighs> that's a um, pick. I will be ripping my pants off this year for Darnell Mooney. Bro, bro, we're in a we're in a we're in that dynasty league you invited me to this year together. Mm-hmm. And th- there's at least three to five teams that offer me Mooney deals daily because they're smart. Yeah, and I'm like, can you get off my butt? I don't want to trade him. See you later. Bye. Uh, I would pick Mooney as high as probably like I don't know. Oh, I he just should... saw I just saw a guy. I don't know if the ADP is going to be accurate this late, but um, without the Watson news, he's 108. Deshaun Watson went away. Yeah, that's uh. If he doesn't get suspended, or he's only suspended for. There's some players here that are just kind of blowing my mind. Uh, Juju at 94 is great value. Um, Rashad Bateman 111 as. Oh my with, god, that's a smash! That's with, an absolute with Hollywood Brown holy gone. Crap. Um, there's no one yeah. else there either. Yep. But anyway, any he, other thoughts you have on this? Because uh, we got to conclude the show. No, I think, I mean, we could, we could do this all day and just talk about I know. how crazy the ADP is, but May is crazy. it's going to change. I mean, all this stuff is going to change. I can't wait to do some mocks because, you know, my life is mocks from here on out. Me too. But uh, anyway, there's some early round or not early round, some just all together redraft ADP. We didn't get, you know, obviously to every pick every round, but some definitely some interesting developments you got to keep an eye on as the season goes along. We're going to be doing some mock drafts, I think, starting next week. So be sure to check those out and enjoy the rest of your weekend, guys. See you later. See you. Thank you for listening to the Fantasy Champions Podcast. Make sure you subscribe on iTunes and YouTube and follow us on Twitter at the FF Champs.